All right, so I want to give a really quick um, example of when I personally would use TDD. All right, so a lot of people don't seem like they really like TDD and they think it's kind of dumb, but I personally think it helps a lot with just thinking through a problem and finding a solution to a problem. And also when you find bugs, it's good to like just start by writing a test that verifies that the bug is actually a real bug. Okay, so I have this, this API framework that I'm working on as a side project. And I added this file-based routing approach where basically you have these routes here. And I added the ability to basically add dynamic routes with like brackets and IDs. And I wrote a couple of it statements that kind of test different scenarios of like the logic under the hood of how the, the routing maps from the URL that you hit in your browser versus the files that we have in the file system. And from the bat, like all these tests run fine. Like if you just go ahead and go to um, the CD, packages, shuttle, npm test, you'll see that these things all pass. But when I look at the code a little bit more and I think about it, it's like, am I really testing all the scenarios? And it turns out I'm actually missing a pretty solid uh, test scenario. And that is, can you put IDs here that have something other than like numbers, okay? This is a very, very basic test. And I realized that, hey, what if they try to hit an endpoint that had like hyphens or underscores in it, okay? So let's actually do some TDD to verify that this code works when we um, have more complex things that are inside of the path here, okay? So should allow a user to provide strings containing some special characters in the path params. Okay, that's what we want to do. We want to add in a test. And again, the idea is you make a failing test and then you come back and you try to make it pass by going to the implementation. So in this case, I'm going to copy the stuff we have here. Just go ahead and paste that in. And I want to delete this line. And we're going to keep this simple. We're going to pretend like we only have a single file in our file system. And if you hit it with to do slash one, two, three, we'd expect it to get back um, these things, right? So this should pass. I know it will pass because uh, I just copied the existing test. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and run this with a watcher so that as I make file changes, this thing will just continuously run. I definitely recommend you doing that if you're using Jest or ByTest or anything like that. Okay, so again, we're trying to write a failing test. And if I were to add like 123 ABC, I would expect that if I hit this endpoint, the framework under the hood to give us back one, two, three, ABC as our path params. But if I save this file, you'll notice that it fails because it doesn't know how to parse this path correctly. So there is a bug in the code and we have a failing test that verifies, hey, like the code doesn't work. Um, and you can keep on doing this approach. You can keep on adding failing tests until you really feel solid with the implementation that you have. Let's go to the implementation and let's try to make this test pass. It shouldn't be too hard and it's not gonna be hard because I did this already uh, off camera. But the idea is now you can kind of go through the code and you can start changing stuff. And as you save your files, your test runner will rerun. And the moment everything turns green in your test runner, like you know you fixed the new test case. So looking up here, basically what we do is when we call this function, we loop over all of the different files that exist in our file system. And one by one, we check if they match a particular regex expression. And if they do, we go ahead and we replace it. So I think off the bat, like we need to be allowing some special characters like underscores or hyphens. And then down here, we also have a matcher that's going and I do believe we want to probably add in some similar characters here. Um, so let's just go ahead and do a hyphen and an underscore and let's save the file and see what happens. And now everything, everything passed. We just fixed the issue. Um, well, we just fixed one particular issue. But if you notice, I didn't add an underscore here, right? So I'm missing a test case for underscores. And what I should probably do is add like a, a hello here and verify that if we add a underscore, this thing should also pass. And it does. So now we have a test case that verifies that we have support for hyphens and underscores. And you can keep adding any other type of special characters that you want here. But if I didn't go in and add that underscore, then like this thing would fail because it can't parse out the hello. So let's just go ahead and do that. And let's go ahead and add in an underscore here. And it seems like it works fine. Again, we can keep on adding stuff. Like let's say this is a capital ABC. Does this thing return the right stuff? Okay, it doesn't work. There's still a bug in our code. So let's go back here and let's add an A. Um, let's do a capital A through Z. Then do capital A, Z. 
then over here we'll say capital A through Z. Let's save this and let's verify that this passes. So now we verify that like everything's working much better than it was before. And the more you just come in here and just think about different scenarios and add in test cases and verify they pass, uh, I think the better your the code under test will become. And again, anytime you're just playing around with the code and something happens that's weird, you get a bug, come in here, add a test case for it that kind of runs the same scenario that caused that bug. And then you come in, you just basically write the test and you come back and you make the implementation pass. That's all I want to share in this video. I just wanted to kind of give a real life example of like TDD in action. And again, it's really useful. You have a function that's like potentially doing something wrong. You have a little bug, you come in, you write tests and now you can fix it. So if you enjoyed watching this, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe, press the bell icon. And like always, I have a Discord channel. You're welcome to join if you want to talk to me directly or just find a place to hang out with some other developers if you're stuck and just need some uh, assistance. Have a good day. Happy coding.